okay next we need to graph our p distance versus t squared you follow so you highlight you click your data click and drag and then release your left click then press control and then click again and drag and then click insert and then you choose from other charts so you click all charts then you choose x y scatter and then you choose this one right here the one with the dot and the one with the uh, connect and uh, the line that connects the dots and then you choose also the second one and then click ok Follow. so this is our position versus time gap so again you need to change the layout to uh, the first layout if you are using I think this is Microsoft Office 360 I think you if you cannot find it you can just uh, find layout and then after that you can now change this chart title into position versus time squared so the square is we will just change the font into superscript so that's it and then copy this one and then so you just copy and then just write it here paste and then we just delete this one to have a wider graph and then you this one to distance and uh, no position position so that is now our position versus time square graph and we know that this is not the correct positioning because we know that the t squared here is uh, used uh, should be our x axis so this one is does not have 8.5 so we need to change this one into select data edit and then for the x axis we have here this t squared and the y axis or the y values we have the position or the distance if I know and then click OK and then click OK okay so you can now print this one or you can print this one later na lang with the uh, trend line so next to that is to add a trend line so notice that our graph is not that very straight and we are expecting a straight line graph so to smoothen it out again um, your graph is not that straight because of the errors that you had while measuring the time okay so you right click and then you add trend line and then you click the linear trend line because we're expecting a straight line graph and then you click this one right here display equation on charge okay and then close this one and then you now have your equation on the chart so um, in math in math we used to have um, the equation that slope intercept form I think so uh, this is like y this is the slope intercept form y is equals to m x plus b so this b right here is the value right here and then your x and then your m so what is m m is actually the slope of your graph so we are able to determine the slope using excel so without now computing for the slope itself so you can just use excel to determine the slope of a straight line graph and then um that slope right there this one right there the point uh, 0 0.1744 you place that one here on um your slope so actually i've already written that one so that is your slope now so um that is your slope and then how do we compute for acceleration experimental so your acceleration experimental is this one um so your acceleration experimental um, we can compute that one using this equation right here if you remember this one is a kinematic equation formula I think this one is equation 2 or 3 I forgot so uh, we know this one to be 0 because our ball metal ball is rolling at an initial velocity of 0 so that cancels out so we are left with d is equal to 1 half a acceleration experimental times d squared then rearranging this one we'll get uh, we'll put the acceleration experiment on the left side and then the other variables or parameters on the right side and then that is now 2d over t squared so this 2d over this d over t squared is actually our slope of our graph and we already know the value to be 0 0.1771744 do you follow so i think you can see it here 
So, 1744. So, to compute for our acceleration experimental, that is 2 times the value of your dt over t squared, and then 2 times that value is equal to 0 0.3488. So, that is now our experimental acceleration value. You follow? So, comparing now our experimental and our theoretical value, so we get the percent error. So, percent error is how how erroneous, how, how many percent is our error in our uh, in the conduct of the experiment. So, the formula is uh, the formula is uh, acceleration experimental minus acceleration theoretical absolute value because either ways, it's either um, I either values could be greater than the other one so we just want the difference between the two the acceleration theoretical and the acceleration experimental and then divided by b the acceleration theoretical because the theoretical acceleration is actually our ideal acceleration then times 100 you follow and then uh, computing that one the answer happens to be at 42% so that 42% is a very uh, uh, large error so that's okay because this is still your first time um, I would just allow that one but uh, hopefully next time uh, you would get a very small error the next time you follow so that is how to get the um, how to graph your data using Microsoft Excel getting the slope value of your straight line graph and then comp determining now or computing now your acceleration experimental. Thank you for listening.
Uh, hi, this is a video on how to graph um, your experimental data using Microsoft Excel. So, um, last time you were performing an experiment and you were getting data like um, you're measuring distances, you're measuring distances, and then you were getting the time by which the ball rolls downward and reaches at this point like um, point 25, uh, 0.25 meters, 0.75 meters, 1 meter, 1.25 meters, and 1.5 meters. So you were getting the time at those uh, distances and you were doing it three times. So that is trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. And this is, uh, you were computing for the average and then you were also computing for the square of the average. Okay. So, um, if you could recall, um, we were discussing this one, graphing motion. And when you were graphing motion, um, let us say these are your data right here. So, these are your data right here. So, um, this is our time, our x-axis, or our x-values, and our y values is position so again the same thing um, this one right here should be in position the y axis here should be your position and then your x axis should be the time you follow and then in this kind of graph you are able to get a straight line graph so in a straight line graph the slope is um, the slope of a position versus time graph is the distance over time or the velocity you follow so um, let us check if, oh no, um, this graph here is a straight line graph and the one you are graphing right now is not a straight line graph. So you would be expecting that your graph is a curved graph. If I know. And then along with the, um, along with the data that you are getting, it's aside from the time, is you are getting the height where this is the height of your ramp and this is your, uh, the distance is what is from here up to this portion right here that is the distance and you are going to need this one to compute for the angle of your ramp you follow so um, I will just highlight this first and hide this first so to compute for the angle of your graph I mean of your ramp so to compute for the angle of your ramp so this is your H or the opposite side and this is your D or the hypotenuse of your triangle. So to compute for um, the angle that is opposite over hypotenuse, or so we used sine theta, and that is equivalent to opposite, which is the height, and then the distance is the hypotenuse. You follow? And then substituting values, we have 0.1 meter based on the data here. We have 0.1 meter and 1.79 for the distance. And then we need to get rid of the sign sim this one sign. So we have to add it over sign and then over sign. So we can now cancel the sign so we are left with theta theta. And then to raise this sign symbol above, so it becomes now sine negative. You follow? So that is called sine inverse or sine negative one times point one meters divided by one point seventy nine. And the answer happens to be if you compute that one happens to be 3 degrees 3.2 degrees and then to compute for acceleration a theoretical acceleration so theoretical acceleration acceleration is uh, using only these formulas right here um, us using only these values right here or even this only this angle that we obtain to compute for acceleration theoretical so to recall um, to recall with our previous discussion um, um, this is our free body diagram so we know that the force of gravity is downward and then we know that this one is the mirror image of your force of gravity and this one is your um, your normal force so this is your ramp so it's like we transferred our ramp here so we know that this angle right here is 3.2 you follow 
and this one is 90 degrees so if that is 90 degrees if this is 3.2 then we could say that that is this one right here is 90 minus 3.2 degrees so the answer is 8.6 86.8 degrees and if you notice this one is the normal force is perpendicular to the surface or this one this is our surface so we know that if this one is nine uh, 86.8 degrees and this one is 90 degrees right here so we know that this one is also 3.2 degrees so we can use now this triangle to compute for our uh, theoretical acceleration so that is um, opposite over hypotenuse our hypotenuse is your force of gravity so that is now by formula the sine 3.2 degrees that is, uh, is equivalent to opposite which is so opposite which is um, F net and then your hypotenuse is your FG you follow then rearranging this one cross multiply we can arrive at this equation so f net is equal to sine 30 degrees times fg now we know that your f net is mass times theoretical acceleration so this is what we are going to determine man the theoretical acceleration and we know also that fg is force of gravity that is mass times gravity so we want to get rid of the mass here so we uh, have it over m over mass so we can cancel that out so whatever you do to the left side do it also to the right side so that is over m so that also cancels out so we are left with acceleration theoretical is equal to sine 32 3.2 degrees times g and then substituting values for g 